I'm gonna show you now how to brush their legs and do line brushing on their legs. And also if they give you some difficulty with holding their leg or brushing it, how to handle that. So first, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift it up and I'm gonna spray to make sure that I get underneath the hair and not just the top of the hair. So I'm gonna start like this and I'm going to brush the hair down in a line, making sure that I get to the base of the fur. Grabbing a little bit as I go. Until I need to spray it again. And again, you can hear when the fur is not brushed. You get a little static sound. And once the hair has been completely brushed, it's very quiet. And your brush will glide right through. You can also see the difference in the brush fur and the fur that hasn't been brushed yet. You always wanna make sure you're working from the bottom up. And the reason you do that is because you're gonna catch less tangles. Imagine if you're brushing a little girl's hair, you don't brush from the roots down to the ends of her hair because she'll probably cry the entire time you're doing it if you catch knots. So you wanna make sure you're doing the same with the dogs. You wanna brush from the bottom up so you're not catching all the tangles over each other. And again, making sure that I'm brushing to the base of the fur. A lot of times when people brush their dogs at home, they have a tendency to brush from the top down. And so they're only brushing the top of the hair, what we call the surface of the hair, instead of brushing from the tips, the root to the tips. So all that hair underneath ends up getting matted and then when pet owners bring their dogs in to the groomers to get done and they find out they have to be shaved because the dog had mats, they're really surprised because they have been brushing their dog at home. So they don't understand how the dog is so matted when they've been diligently brushing it. So we're gonna spray again. And we're gonna pull a little more coat down. So a lot of dogs will do like Taylor is doing here. They will dip their heads when you're trying to brush to get their face in the way because they don't want you to do it. Some dogs will pull as she's doing right now. When they do that, a lot of times you can just give them their arm. If they try and pull you, I'm gonna help her. Here, take your arm, that's what you wanna do. Many times when you do that, a dog will push their arm back into the position that you want them on. Sometimes you can just let them stand and they will pull less. Sometimes you can pick up the other leg, put your hand underneath their head, and then you can continue brushing. This will all depend on the dog, how used to being brushed they are, if they're a puppy, if they're a senior, if they have any pain but it gives you an idea of a couple different things that you can try with your dog and see what works. So now we're gonna go through with our comb and we're gonna make sure we have all of our mats, knots, tangles out. The comb should glide through and then you know that you've gotten everything out because you can feel the comb get to the base of the root or the dog's arm itself. And so you know you're going all the way through like that. Now we're gonna show you a little bit of the back leg because her head won't be in the way. So this one is a little bit easier to do than the front arms are.
It's the same concept. Spray your fur, pull up the hair. And run your brush. As you notice, I'm going back and forth with the brush. I only do about two to three strokes in one area before I move on to the next. And the reason is to make sure that I'm not repeatedly brushing over and over on her skin because I am getting to the base of her fur. So the tines of the brush are in fact touching her skin. In order to keep from giving her brush burn, you have to keep that brush moving. Even if there is a knot or a tangle there, you have to keep the brush moving. You can go back to it and work on it little by little, but you don't wanna stay in one area and continue to work on it until you get it out because you run the risk of giving your dog brush burn. With white dogs, it's a lot easier to give them brush burn for some reason than it is dogs of other fur colors. Now, a lot of dogs are not going to sit as still as she is. A lot of dogs are not gonna be as well behaved as she is. Mind you, she does get bathed, dried, and brushed once a week. So she's had this done since she was about four or five weeks old, and she's very, very used to it. She's not perfect. She does still try and pull her leg away, but she's very used to this. Some dogs are going to scream when you try to brush them. You're not hurting them. They just don't like it and they don't want you to do it. Some dogs don't like being restrained. Some dogs just really don't like the feeling of being brushed. Many times you can compare it to someone who goes to the dentist but hates it and complains about it all the time and doesn't want to go and finds any excuse to cancel their appointment. And sometimes you do have those dogs who are in fact fearful of it because they may have had a bad experience in the past or they may constantly be matted and they've been subjected to, to dematting from their groomers. And they truly are afraid of the pain that comes along with it. So many times dogs will scream. you will have to figure out which, which one your dog is, if they're a faker or if they're legitimate, legitimately screaming because they're scared. So you can see the difference between the fur that's brushed and the fur that's not. It has a tendency to look clumped together. I have a harder time holding onto her fur and lifting it because a lot of times she wants to sit when I get to this part of her. And so it makes it hard for me to hold this up without her leaning away from me or sitting. So I have to hold on to her body instead and just comb or brush the fur little by little. Then we will take our comb again, and we're gonna go through all the way to the bottom of the foot to make sure that there are no remaining mats, knots, tangles in the fur. Again, making sure that the comb is touching her actual leg and going all the way through. Once you've determined that you don't have any mats, or knots or tangles, then you're gonna move on to the next section.